Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about fractures to be specific classification of fractures. So what is a fracture? A fracture refers to break in the structural continuity of bone. So fractures can be classified in many ways. Though in today's lecture we're going to focus on the eponymous fractures. No, the most common is open and closed which is basically the clinical classification. So let's go we'll start with Gustilo Anderson classification of open tibial fractures. So there are three types. Type 1 is whereby the wound is less than 1 cm and is not contaminated. Type 2 wound is 1 to 10 cm and is contaminated. Type 2 refers to where the wound is greater than 10 cm plus 3A, no periosteal damage but is contaminated. 3B, it's more than 10 cm with periosteal stripping. And then 3C is greater than 10 cm wound plus neurovascular damage. So basically this is the same thing. Then the other one is Salter Harris classification of fractures involving the epiphyseal plate. Type 1 injury. That's where there's complete separation at the feces without damage to metaphysis or epiphysis. Type 2 injury is the most common triangular fragment of metaphysis attached to displaced epiphysis. Type 3 injury involves articular surface with separation of an epiphyseal fragment. Type 4 injury refers to fracture of articular surface with extension into metaphysis. Type 5 injury compression of fracture involving part or all of, of the feces type 6 injury fractures involving part of the cortex of both epiphysis and metaphysis on the edge of the physial plate these fractures should be reduced to well to prevent impairment of growth so this is basically a diagram showing the same thing that i was talking about if you may have noticed in the note it was actually six Though the most common classification talks about five types. Then this is showing the same thing as well as this. Okay, then shaft of femur fracture and classification. So it can be classified according to the nature. Is it closed or open? According to the geometry, is it transverse? Is it oblique? Is it comminuted? And then the location, is it a proximal fracture, middle fracture, or distal fracture? So this is the Winquist and Hansen classification. Type 0 where there is no comminution. Type 1, insignificant comminution. Type 2, greater than 50% cortical contact. Type 3, less than 50% cortical contact. And type 4, segmental fracture with no cortical contact, as you can see on the diagram. Then we have our common classification, guidelines classification of supracondylar fractures. Type 1 is where it is undisplaced. Type 2, displaced fracture with intact posterior cortex. Type 3, complete displacement. It can be posterior medial or posterior lateral as you can see on the diagram. Type 1, type 2 and type 3. Then we have guidance classification of neck of femur fractures. Type 1 is incomplete or impacted with no displacement, medial trabecular intact, vasculitis preserved. Type 2, complete fracture with no displacement, trabecular aligned, vascularitis preserved. Type 3, complete fracture with partial displacement of less than half or less than 50%. Type 4 is complete fracture with complete displacement, trabeculars are not aligned, vascular damage is present. So this is basically the same thing and this. And we have a wide Griffin classification of intertrochanteric fractures. Type 1 is undisplaced fracture. Type 2 partially displaced fracture. Type 3 reverse fracture and type 4 displaced fracture with subtrochanteric extension. So basically this is the Evans classification of intertrochanteric fractures as you can see in the diagram. Yes, so that is it. We have Weber classification of ankle fractures. Type A below the syndesmosis, type B at the syndesmosis, and type 3 above the syndesmosis. 
so this is the diagram showing type A which is below syntesmosis B at the level of syntesmosis and C above the level of syntesmosis so that's all about classification of fractures if you have any additions you can add that to the comments thank you